people want to explore beyond their normal lives. It's healthy for us to, to fight, and it's healthy for us to run in fear. You're entering a whole new landscape where you are no longer you. This game is called LARP and it stands for Live Action Role Playing. Several groups operate in Toronto, but this group Underworld is the most popular with just over 300 players registered. Games are played in or outdoors depending on the weather. From June to September, games are played over an entire weekend, which includes camping. Underworld is unique because unlike other LARP groups in Ontario, Underworld is only for ages 18 and up. Their game centers on immersion. Players must remain in character throughout the entire game. While dressing up and playing fantasy may sound silly, it begs the question, why do people play? Explaining it to my parents was a little rough because they were worried that they were like, oh, they're going to be running after each other with like sharp metal objects and like, uh, someone's going to get hurt and all that stuff. And I explained, like, they're doing it with foam and people are using actual, like, equipment and safety precautions are being taken. And, yeah, it's just, uh, it was rough explaining it to them, but then they became really supportive because I wasn't very, a social, I wasn't very social uh, in face-to-face -face contact. So it was a change that well, you, you LARP just by the really got behind. It, so. The more, I guess, extroverted you have to become. Um, I've seen a lot of people join LARP who were very socially awkward, stuck in a self-conscious shell, and then two years later playing, you know, they're running around talking, life at the party, the whole, the whole setup. LARP scholar Marcus Montola supports players' claims that LARP can help players socially. While Montola admits no concrete research exists to his knowledge, to support the benefits of LARP, he cites that learning is the very function of play and that role-playing exercises can be used to build social skills, learn to lead a group, or even how to ask... What separates LARP from traditional nerdy games like Dungeons & Dragons or World of Warcraft is the social aspect. Warcraft can be played online at home. D&D is generally played by groups of 5 or 10. LARP has embraced its top spot on the nerd spectrum. I come try LARP and I'm like, no, I gotta leave something between me and the biggest nerds on earth. Like, I can't, no. I can't be those guys. <laughs> and when I tried it out, it was like, the, the level of social interaction goes way up. But then so does the level of commitment. Like, there's hundreds of people running around in the woods now together, but then they're all in costumes, they're all playing characters, and they're all playing this big game together. Most players in Underworld say they joined because they were referred by friends. For many players, this has led to day-to-day -day stuff. I have a lot of like hobbies, I guess. I do a film, sort of. I do a web show on YouTube. I play a supervillain named Doctor Holocaust. I do uh, gaming streams. I talk about uh, political unrest and developments in the scientific community and things like that. Sort of like a political scientific awareness and an opinion piece, uh, more than anything else. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I'm working at Dell as a salesperson in their small businesses department. Outside of LARP, I am a lazy bum. <laughs> um, but other than that, I, um, I'm also a student um, studying makeup and cosmetics. So um, being around here with all these like uh, players who have like all these creative um, ways of their makeup and also like, you know, helping people out with their makeup. It's like really, it's really fun. Like, and all, also very tempting. <laughs> Just want to bring over my entire makeup kit and like, I want to fix your face <laughs> to make it more pretty. I work in theater and film. Uh, I like crafting. I like building things. Uh, I actually just finished a commission today for a guy um, for a latex weapon. 
So uh, that's, that's one of the ways we create the weapons we use to strike each other safely. We use foam and latex uh, with sort of a PVC core or like a, a rod core. And we, we put it all together and it's a safe weapon to strike somebody with without hurting. I originally come from a construction background, so I have way too many tools for my own good. But um, the bracers, the chain, the leather work underneath, all made by myself. Um, Gorget, uh, under all this there's even more chain mail that I weave to myself. If nothing else, it's a nice way to kill time. Some people like to collect stamps. Some people like to build little model boats inside of a bottle. Uh, me, I like to dress in a costume and fight monsters for a Benefits aside, LARP is a hobby for all its players, though Underworld has turned it into a viable business, running incorporated for the last six years. Underworld made an appearance on the popular show Dragon's Den. Unfortunately, no dragons were slayed, but that didn't stop their mission. A crowdfunded campaign on GoFundMe raised $34,532. The money was raised in 18 months by 153 members. In March 2016, Underworld closed the deal to purchase 100 acres of land in northern Ontario. They accomplished their goal without the dragon's help. The land is a future setting. Uh, LARP is something that is now here to stay. Um, if, if you want to look at it on a much more macro level, entertainment is becoming more interactive. Uh, we see that around us all the time. Somehow in the past 10 years, what people would call nerd culture or dorky or dweeby has become somewhat cheap. It mystifies me. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. And we've seen record-breaking numbers to events consistently for years now. More people are coming out. More people want to experience it. It seems like it's growing really, really fast. Um, like, just this past year, I think we had, like, four guilds open up. And previous to that, we only had, like, three guilds. For, I think it was 20 years. This is Underworld's 20th anniversary this year. Um, and just in this past year, uh, you, we've seen enormous growth because just last year we were on Dragon's Den. While Underworld received no money from Dragon's Den, co-owner David Ashby attributes the rise in donations for their crowdfunded campaign to their appearance on national television. He noticed personally this appearance contributed to LARP becoming the part of the Geek is the New Sheep. Montola does see LARP getting more attention globally. In the United States, it's opening its first College of Wizardry, where role-playing students can learn about types of magic. The Nordic LARP conference, to be held in 2017, will gather people from all over the world, including countries like Brazil and Australia. Despite being fantasy, LARP's roots began in reality. Noted journalist and author Lizzie Stark tracks LARP's involvement in events like the Franco-Prussian War. Her book, Leaving Mundania, discusses how role-playing was used by soldiers to simulate battles. She went on to detail, LARP's role in fantasy began with the television show Star Trek. Fans would dress up as their favorite characters. They became then known as Trekkies. Pretty much every big chunk of media that's come out in the past, you know, maybe eight, ten years, tends to have a fantasy. F As for the game itself, characters pay around $45 per weekend. The storylines in the game come from ex-players who graduate into shapers. While their stories are plotted out, players are able to make their own decisions on how to react to them. This heightens the drama for players. Characters they've spent months or years creating could die, forcing them to start over. As shapers, that's what we strive for. That's what we try and get. We want our players to experience real emotions, um, while at the same time giving them a experience which is cathartic, which is um, exciting, which doesn't upset them on an out of game level. Like um, it is, it is our objective as a shaper to make people feel things, but not at the same time to upset them in a permanent way. Well, this is my third character over the eight years. Um, I'm actually trying to remember. I've been playing this guy for a while now. 
Uh, it originally started with a friend of mine who also plays, sort of like as a running joke. And we decided, let's just make two ridiculous creatures that are going to wander into Jericho. And ogres are typically, as soon as you see when you kill it on sight, generally speaking, they're too dangerous. So we spent the better part of a year trying not to get ourselves killed. And just as our characters developed, we found different routes to go down. Eek is the new chic is the term now being used to describe this culture. TV writer and Wired Magazine columnist Warren Ellis relates LARP's elevation to superhero movies that generate hundreds of millions of dollars that are rooted in 